Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Just out here playing around with the plants, getting ready to do some watering. Been watching the forecast, and it's that time of year where my brain's just constantly on the go with wanting to. I just, I want everything outside. I'm ready to be outside with my plants. And I know I had mentioned in my last vlog that that was something I would talk about. I'm getting a fairly decent amount of questions asking about moving the houseplants outside, so let's talk about it. Typically, when it comes to moving the houseplants outside, there's a process called hardening off. And that's usually used when talking about seedlings. And all it is really referring to is just acclimating, just gently acclimating the plants to going outside. With seedlings, you move them outside for like, an hour at a time and you bump it up an hour every day you do that for a couple weeks and it helps toughen them up so that they're more acclimated to the elements of being outdoors it's really different being outside versus inside inside things are stable especially because a lot of people have things in their homes and not you know in a giant plastic dexter bubble in their garage so typically most households the temperature doesn't fluctuate very much so seedlings and houseplants will have to adjust to that change when going outdoors. Now, with houseplants, depending on the size of the plant, it's not always typical to say, okay, just bump it outside every day for an hour and an extra hour every day because some of them are kind of big. That's not always something you can do. And there are things to pay attention to, like the forecast. So I think that's probably the first thing to talk about, right? Is when do you even start the process and then how do you do it? So uh, there are variables to consider. For me, the main thing I look at is temperature and what kind of plant is it. My plants go out in different groups. So I already have a whole bunch that are outside and they are plants that would be typically hardy into like a zone 7B, 8, some of them maybe a little bit higher than that or, or even lower. But basically plants that can take a dip into the upper 30s if that were to happen. I'm talking Fahrenheit here. Those plants, I move them out. I take them and I put them into as much shade as I can, even if they're under really bright, intense grow lights like they are in here. They still go into the shade into a spot that's pretty sheltered from the wind. Uh, let's go outside and talk about that so you can actually see what I'm referring to. Hey, Bunkin. You follow me around? Yeah, you can't go outside. I'm sorry. You'd get eaten. We don't want that to happen. That'd be very bad. You know what? I think it would be a good idea to do more of a brief summary and then can jump in and talk more about my thought process with the tropicals and everything. Just for the people who don't want a long drawn out video. But when it comes to moving the plants out, there are a few different things to keep in mind. The first one is, well, what is the plant? What is it like? So if you're growing something like lettuce, there's some red leaf romaine here green leaf over here on the side they can take cooler temperatures same thing with like a swiss chard those are plants that i could move out sooner and i just make sure that they're not going to be out when the climate is going to be exceeding their preferences so if they have a minimum temperature then don't move them out when it's going to be colder than that it's better to be in the middle that's going to be true of all plants right if you're taking a plant that prefers shade and acclimating it to full sun, well, that's not gonna work out, is it? It's just gonna end up scorching. Lettuce can take sun. They don't like things too terribly hot right now. The average temperatures are around like 50-ish. Today's exceptionally warm. We're right about the right place for lettuce, Swiss chard, other cool season veggies and crops. That's not going to be an area where I could move many house plants, but it is a time where I could start. That's the first thing to keep in mind. What is the plant? What does it prefer? Stay within those parameters. And there are a few different ways to harden off plants to acclimate them to being outside. This first way I'm talking about is a little bit more typical for things like seedlings. I'll talk about doing it in more of a slower process with like larger plants a little bit later in the video. What I typically like to do is to uh, first for a few days move them out to just a shaded location somewhere in the garden and then I'll pull them back in at nighttime just to be safe and I'll do that for a few days and that's just to adjust them to being outdoors period to the airflow. Then after that I'll start acclimating them to light and go by like day one through day eight something like that. Overall it's about a 10 to 14 day process something like that and that's doing it 
fairly quickly. With larger broadleaf plants, I prefer to just stick them somewhere with low light for a few days and then move them up to more light a few days later and then let them sit there for a few days and then so forth. But like I said, we'll talk about that later on how I do that with my bigger plants. The next thing that's important to keep in mind is sunlight and sun preferences. It's not just the temperature. So uh, something like lettuce, they can take full sun in a cool or more mild climates. When it, here, when it gets hot, I move them into more shade because otherwise they'll bolt. But that's, that's not the point of this video. Let's just say everything on this table is full sun, even though it's not. Really just the lettuce. These other plants, the calathea, and then the ginura, they prefer more shade. Let's pretend they like full sun. Parameters for full sun is generally anything over six to eight hours of light a day. So that means on day one, I would move these plants out into full sun for one hour. And then on day two, two hours, day three, three hours, day four, four hours so forth until they've gotten up to about eight to 10 hours and then they could stay out in the full sun. Again, that's only for full sun plants. Keep in mind the preference of the plants. You're moving something out that prefers more shade than sun. Say it's a Sansevieria, a Calathea, something like that. Then I would move those plants out into more of a filtered light with the same pattern an hour a day, increasing how filtered things are until it can take a little bit of direct sun, depending on the plant. The Calathea, I don't know how much I would go into full sun. And it, so see how my hands up here? This is what you would want for filtered light. Underneath a tree, something like that. You can also get something like shade cloth off of the internet. They come in different percentages for how much light they're going to let through. And it's going to be the same process an hour a day until you reach the maximum that you think where you're going to be keeping the plant. So if I'm going to be putting this plant somewhere where it would be getting three to four hours of direct light, then I'm going to acclimate it until it can take that direct light. And I'm going to start with filtered light at about 50 to 75% filtered. So that means not much light's going to get through on the first date and then a little bit less the next day until it can go up to more light and then so forth until it can handle the maximum of wherever you're going to put it. So just keep in mind, full shade, part shade, part sun, full sun, those things, and then stay within those parameters, work them up to it, and it should be okay. It's also good to consider the amount of airflow that's going around the plant. If you haven't had these in your home someplace where there's any air movement, and then you move them outside into like really strong wind, that can be a bit much for them. So maybe start off on those first few days someplace a little bit more protected so that the foliage can get used to the air moving around them and being able to handle that and be strong enough for it. Normally that's not a huge issue. You know, when you're doing things so slowly where it's an hour a day and then two hours and three hours and four hours, usually that's enough where you don't have to worry about that too much. But there are some plants that are more delicate like the alicot... <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have that potted in there. It was just sitting there. And yep, there it goes. Plants like alacajas, calacajas, bird of paradise. We'll talk about that one more in a minute. Those are plants where they will go ahead and drop their foliage when they're not used to having any movement around them. Anything making the leaves move back and forth. They just kind of throw a fit and go bleh and drop them. And they'll grow new ones. It's not the end of the world, but this is just a good way to avoid that happening is by acclimating them slowly. Okay, so now we'll go talk about kind of my thought process with the different levels of the plants and their hardiness and just sort of how I do things. So over here, there's a cat palm. I have it up against the wall. It's going to get like an hour or so of morning sun and then it will be filtered throughout the rest of the day. And then as the weeks go on, well, the days really, probably every four days or so, I'll, I could move it to where it will get a little bit more sunlight. I don't know that I'm going to do that just yet, though, because our temperatures are really all over the the place if things were going to steadily be above 40 i'd say really even 45 for a cat palm then that's what i would keep doing but it's like 80 today and gonna be like 36 in a few days so it's just out here for like a little vacation staying in the shade except for this morning sun these are probably a better example for talking about having something in a sheltered spot where they're just going to get a little bit of morning light and then it's going to be filtered throughout the rest of the day the bird of paradise these are the white bird of paradise these are a plant where if i were to move them out into the sun where there's no shelter from any kind of wind then what they do what has happened before is these leaves up here they basically go i don't know how to handle this and they just flop they drop over and uh, it's not the end of the world but it doesn't look good eventually you end up having to cut them off 
it's a fast growing plant. It'll put out new growth quickly. You can see I've already done some pretty heavy prunes on this one and then the one that's over here to the side of it. And that was just because they had some foliage that was kind of long and lanky. It didn't look like it was really going to pull through with being out here in these like random elements that we're having. Not a cold hardy plant by any means at all, but they're in a spot where the warm air kind of settles and they're sheltered from the wind. And then there's dappled light from the tree above them. If the forecast were to be staying stable, then what I would be doing here is probably, I don't know, even by now, these have been out here for a week. We did have one very cold night. It wasn't, it was supposed to get down to 44. It got down, or I think it was 46 and it got down to 34. Wasn't forecasted. So there was nothing I could do to prevent that, but they did okay. They're in a sheltered spot. I think that the frost was able to kind of stay away from them because of the being in here in a sheltered location. And then there's like some warm pavement around here. There's a big body of water right behind me. That's the pool. It's probably very loud with the microphone right now. I'm sorry about that. So essentially I've made sure to put them into a spot that has a microclimate to it. Oh yeah, so like I was saying, let's just pretend that temperatures were going to be nice and stable. They're going to stay above 40 and then ideally daytime temperatures in at least the 70s. They're tropicals. They like warm temperatures. Then that would mean that every three to four days I would move them to where they're going to get just a little bit more light and about like an hour to two hours more light every three or four days. And then within about two weeks they should be acclimated to full sun. I'm not going to be keeping these in full sun regardless so I'm not really too worried about that part of it. But if it were a palm tree, a croton, something like that, and that's all it is. Start them off in the shade. I, above 40 for a croton for sure. They're not going to like that. The type of plant you're working with does make a big difference, right? So uh, Cordelin fruticosa, the uh, crotons, uh, I mean really most house plants aren't going to want to be below 50 or 55. But when you get to that point where you do have those warmer temps and you can start to move them out and nighttime temperatures aren't going to be too chilly, then that's the time to do it. If you're concerned, if it's a really sensitive plant, like a, like a croton, they throw a fit. They'll drop their leaves over just about anything. It's okay, they'll grow them back. They just, they throw a fit. The best way to harden them off or to move those outside would be to wait until nighttime temperatures are in the 60s or just scoot them outside during the daytime when it's, you know, in the upper 60s to 70s, like somewhere near what household conditions are, but taking them from 70 to where the nighttime's gonna be 50 and then it's gonna change a lot, that can be kind of extreme for them because they are more of a true tropical. And I'm not saying that the bird of paradise isn't a true tropical, but they can take a brief cold spell and bounce back from it normally. Whereas a croton, I mean, they'll defoliate if they get some frost, but you're looking at a bigger setback typically. So here's another example. I have a ponytail palm here. They're gonna be more sensitive to the cold. So I have it right outside my garage door. It's a nice cloudy day. So the sun's not going to scorch it. And then at nighttime, when the temperatures get cooler, I'll just screw it back in. I'm going to do that every single day, probably until it's ready to keep it outside full time. And they, these actually can take a little bit more cold. And again, this is a situation where the type of plant does make a difference. It's a ponytail palm. They're not as easy to come by in a larger size. They do grow more slowly, so it's not something where I'm willing to risk it taking any cold damage. Whereas with like the bird of paradise, they're more than likely going to be fine as long as it's very brief and it warms back up very quickly. They grow fast. That's not what's going to happen here. And if these have any dieback within their crown in here, then you lose that monopodial growth and it's going to branch out from the sides and you forever lose that shape that you try to maintain with a plant like this. Okay, and then lastly, plants that are like true true tropicals, they're the ones I'm the most careful with. These are adenidia palms. They don't really like to go below 50. They can for a little while, as long as it's not extended and temperatures aren't too wet. But this is a plant where I go, okay, this needs to stay right next to my front door so that if the temperatures do drop, which they did, and I just, I got lucky with these. I don't know how, but they suffered no damage from it getting down to 34 for a night when it wasn't forecasted, wasn't, it wasn't my fault. But there's gonna be more nights like that coming up. We're gonna be warm for a few days, and then it looks like we're gonna drop back into the 30s. We're even forecasting possibly like some frozen wintry mix next week. So they're right next to my front door. So I can just pull them back in. They get a little bit of morning light. And uh, if I were to be keeping these out here full time, like in probably two weeks, these will be out here full time. And I would leave them out here for four or five days, and then I'll scoot them somewhere else where they'll get a little bit more light. And then I'll scoot them somewhere else four or five days later where they'll get even more light until they're acclimated to full sun. Main thing is just to prevent the foliage from scorching 
and uh, also keeps them someplace sheltered so that the foliage doesn't throw a fit to a breeze. I did have a fan running where I had these in my house so that they did get some movement in the foliage during the winter time and that can make a really big difference is having something so that the plants aren't just all of a sudden shocked by having moving air around them which is good it's going to make them more sturdy same thing with the foxtail up here it's really liking being outside it didn't skip a beat with that 34 it's like hey i'm just going to pop open a new frond actually this adenidia right here this christmas palm did the same thing so they're still responding well to being outdoors a little bit of a cutback on them but that's okay because just being outside with natural light and the warmer temperatures during the day, they're doing fantastic. So far that's been enough to keep them happy. And getting them outside makes such a big difference with pests. These were starting to show some signs of some mealybugs on them. By signs of mealybugs, I mean there were mealybugs on them. And just a few days outside, like having the moving air around them and a little bit more sunlight, that's been enough to really get rid of most of them. And wildlife eats them too makes a big difference and it's easier to spray because you don't have to be as controlled with what you're doing <laughs> so to summarize know what kind of plant you have know its cold tolerance do not exceed the cold tolerance move it outside to some place sheltered from wind and light it's not always possible to shelter them from the wind but just do it carefully if it's a big plant then that's more necessary because you can't move it in and out every day little plants just take them outside every day. Do that for like up to 10 days, increase the amount of light they get by an hour each day. If you forget a day, it's not the end of the world. Just start back from wherever you left off and uh, keep going. It's really, it's not that complicated. Sometimes there might be some sun scorch. Hey Tuck, you good boy. Yo, you sleepy, I'm sorry. Yeah, sometimes there'll be some scorch. That happens, the whole point of acclimating them, of harding them off is to avoid that scorch. But it happens. It's not the end of the world. Ideally, it won't happen, but it does. That's why it's also important to know your climate. Of course, if you live someplace where the sun is really, really intense, then maybe baby step it a little bit more carefully into full sun. Maybe start the plants off in filtered light when you move them outside and uh, every day get them up to where you can put them in full sun and then take your process on from there. It's the basics, everything else is to when to do it. That just kind of depends on your plant and what you're dealing with. Like this Australian tree fern, they can take some colds and also like for me, this plant's a pain in the butt. I don't really care if it defoliates. I'm fine with it, it grows so fast whatever it'll be fine i just don't like it indoors it's such a pest magnet that for me the faster i can get it outdoors the better now if we do have frost or icy conditions i'll either cover it or go ahead and pull it back in uh same thing like with this cat palm down here in a few days when the nighttime temperatures start to drop back below i'd say 45 that'll come in hibiscus this was out here when it got down to 34 and didn't skip a beat i know that's weird but it's something it seems fine. Sometimes cold damage can take a while to show on plants like palm trees, but the hibiscus would show it right away. Right, Tucker? You being actually cute today, you so happy to be outdoors? Yeah, I know, it's time to shut up. Okay, so I hope everybody's doing well. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Throw them down there in the comments. I love talking to everybody. I'm about to give these guys a bath. Toby, you stinky Toby. Oh God, what's on your face? <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna give them a bath and pick up the vlog that'll all come out on Saturday. What kind of plants do you guys move out first? Does it matter to you? Do you just wait and do it all in one batch or do you kind of slowly do it if you have an assortment of things that can maybe take a little bit more cold than other things even though this turned out to be absolutely fine? I guess the frost just didn't get it. Must be close enough to the ground. Same thing like I talked about with the bird of paradise over on the other side of the yard. I have really been fighting temptation with not moving more plants out, but since the forecast just like did a complete 180 from what it was saying it was going to do last week, that makes it a little bit easier because I know like right now I'm more likely to have to move plants back in as opposed to bringing them out. It's a couple more weeks. It's April right now, so usually late April things start to get more mild and then I can move the rest of everything. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for it. Uh, Toby, I forgot that was on your face. And you know the whole YouTube thing, it's all down on the screen. I appreciate it. And of course, as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.